we're going to build this the next stage up. So we've done from the ground up to the wall, and now we're going to do from the wall, because this is the subfloor, the garage, up to the floor, the suspended timber frame floor of the upper ground floor and the wall that sits above this. Now when we're drawing detailing, we don't need to show everything. We can truncate. We don't need to show the whole floor. We can cut it off. We don't need to show the whole wall. We can cut it off. And so we can put a fill, just like we did before, through here and say that everything in between here and here is a continuation of the same thing. So we don't need to draw anything else effectively. Now we could make that smaller than this if we wanted to, but that'll be fine for now. So we're going to keep going. What's next? How do we connect into this? It is likely that we will have a piece of timber that sits on top of this. And in this instance, that's exactly what happens. What, how are we going to draw this? We can use a percentage fill. How are we going to draw timber? We have to ask ourselves, what sort of timber is it? Is it a decorative timber? Is it structural? What's it doing? In this instance, we're talking about structural timber that's actually made of hardwood, so it's a, bit, a little bit of a mixture. And so it's not dressed. That's a very important terminology. We're going to make it 90 by... We'll use 45. We'll use standardized sizes, even though in this case, because it's older hardwood sections, it's actually not. We're going to make the top this brown color, 153, and we'll make the underside transparent. And we could make it 50 if we wanted it to be a little bit more brown. <coughs> and we're going to make the outline 2. So this is how we're going to represent our timber, and if we felt that was too dark, we could use a, a lighter color as well. So the timber is going to sit on top. Now if it's a not dressed, an undressed piece of timber, then what we're going to do is to use a cross through it to represent that it's not dressed. And basically all timber no matter what purpose it serves, will look like this. It will just be in different orientations or shapes. This is our tie-down plate. On top of this, we will have another piece of timber. And in this instance, the timber will run in this direction. And that could be our bearer. And then on top of that, we could have a joist. Now, the bearer can sometimes get cut into this, and that's exactly what happens here. So we'll bring this down, and that's effectively where the bearer is sitting. And then the joist will sit across here. Or in this case, the bearer will be running in this direction. So I'm drawing this just with lines for now. And then the joist will sit across that one. So what will the joist look like? It looks exactly the same as this. So in, in effect, the bear is actually slightly fatter. Instead of being 90 by 45, we'd make that 90 by 70, 65, something like that. And we'll finish this off by doing that. So this is our bearer. This is our top plate. This is our joist. And now the joist will sometimes, in this particular house, be 90 and it will sometimes be 150, or 140, or 145. We'll make it 145, just to try to be consistent again. And I could stretch the fill and stretch the lines, or if I want to do that all simultaneously, I'll use a marquee, edit, reshape, stretch, and that will allow me to stretch them all simultaneously. Because the most annoying thing about drawing with timber is having to draw lines as well as fills to keep it simple. Once we've got this joist, this is repeated, so I will group this together. Now let's just say, for the sake of fun, that this is running the whole way through, it's not, but let's just keep it simple. So we will multiply this 
and we'll say spread, and in this instance we'll spread it 450 millimeters. So we're repeating this profile like this. Now if we wanted to make sense of what we're seeing in the elevation of here, we could also add this fill as a joist, and we could make this a 25%, and we could cut it out from here, so it also looks like timber. It helps us just to identify what it is. We could do the same thing with the bricks if we wanted to, because having lots of white things doesn't help very much. So in this case, we'll say the top is 103, and then the bottom is transparent, and then that's also a, a 50 or 25 percent. But we'll just change these to be outline pen one, and we'll change that to 25 percent so it's very, very faint. So now even when things in elevation, we can still represent it with color and identify it, otherwise that can become confusing. All right, what do we have on top? On top of our timber joists is timber floor. What is that timber floor? In this case, it is hardwood tongue and groove. So we'll make that D19. And we'll change it this time to make it a little bit richer. So we can make it a bit darker, darker pen color, or a different pen color. Uh, but the other thing that we need to do, in this case, we need to add a different type of fill. So if we go through this, we have one here called wood. I'm going to change it to wood zero and I want the foreground color to be 1 and the background color to be 160. So when we're seeing dressed timber, we show the wood grain. When we're showing undressed timber, we show an X through it. So this is the representation of what we've got. Now how does this finish? What happens on the outside of this building? It could be a, a number of different things. We need to be able to connect this piece of timber to the brick. How does that get done? Usually that's done with a hoop iron, which is where we see the down here somewhere. Let's just do it up higher. Let's do it maybe here, just for now. We have the metal fold in under the bricks, wrap up over, over the top. That's way too thick make it thinner and then that is nailed or screwed into the piece of timber and then all the rest of the timber is bolted or nailed or screwed into place. Now the reality is it doesn't go that far down that's happening somewhere in this area which is not seen so we can send that back. How does this relate inside here? Where does this sit? We're missing some things. We're missing the cladding, but we can come to that later. So let's just draw the timber at the moment, and then we can come to the other bits later. So we've got different named timber, but basically it looks the same. So we've got a plate. We're using percentage fills here in order to be able to make it not so dark, mm -hmm. and we're putting a cross through it in order to represent that it's not dressed. We're using another percentage fill, but this time we're making it lighter, we're showing that this is the bearer, so we're not cutting through this in section, and therefore the outline needs to be thin, so we're going to make that one. We are cutting through these timbers here, and they are quite important. So let's make the outline of this three, and we are cutting through this flooring, but it's less important than the frame, so we'll make its outline two. So everything's got a, a size, a scale, a number. Uh, that's the next thing we're doing to represent how this floor works. And of course, to finish that off, it looks the same way. We want to truncate that end, delete the lines. That's what we're trying to make it look. We're, we're still missing some things, um, but that's enough 
for now. Let's try to add in that next amount of detail.